Okay, my name's Neil Vanderplug, and here you're watching the Tour of Hungary 2017 UCI 2.2. This is the final kilometres of the final stage of the tour. And the stage started in the Yaz Berini and finished in the capital of Hungary, Budapest. Apologies for my shocking pronunciation of Kaz Berini. I have no idea how you actually say it. The Hungarian language is very difficult, so apologies to all the Hungarians out there. You're looking at the uh, Shimano sports camera, uh, forward facing from in between my handlebars. So that uh, fella in front there is uh, Scott Sunderland. So he's been uh, one of the, the big sprinters on our team this year. He's uh, got quite a few results, and he's been... Uh, on some red hot form leading into this race, which was uh, held back in June, sorry, July. I think this one was from the uh, 5th or 3rd, sometime around there, early July anyway. So at, the, at this point in the race, we're uh, just heading in. That's a bit of an iconic square there on the right of Budapest. Uh, this is uh, the opening, uh, Sorry, not the opening, this is the entrance to the final finishing circuit, which you can see on the top right. Uh, so it's a bit of a rectangular prism there. How many laps we do, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but at this point, we're at around 14 kilometres to go. So I should just say, I've got uh, in the top left, every time a kilometre ticks by, I've got, uh, I'll say, how many kilometres to go. It is a little bit rough. So I've just, there is actually, as you, as you can see, there's no course markings, it's not very clear. Uh, and I've just gone off the, uh, the data file. So anyway, I just thought I'd uh, give a little bit of commentary here, just to give a, a, a little bit more insight into what is going on. So, yeah, at the moment we're, uh, we've taken it up at around uh, 15 kilometres to go, or even further, it was, it was in between 15 and 20 k's to go that we, we moved to the front. So. You can't actually see it at the moment, but believe it or not, there's a, a fairly large peloton uh, riding just behind us. So we took it up fairly early on this day, uh, and currently, I should mention, is uh, Sean Lake in the wind. So at the moment, Sean Lake is uh, swapping off. He's doing the bulk of the work, and also giving him a few turns, I believe, early on at this stage is uh, Chris Harper. So at the moment, the... The, oh, the, uh, the team order will be Sean in the front, uh, Harper second, you can actually see him just in front of Scott there, Scott's number 91 just in front of me, then we've got Tim Rowe, uh, he's somewhere up there as well, and uh, Robbie Hucker who's on my wheel, now normally Robbie Hucker would be getting amongst this lead out action, uh, but today he's actually up there on GC, he's in fourth place overall and he's trying to snag a spot on the podium. So we've actually opted to uh, not use him in the lead out and run him on the back of the lead out train and hope that he can actually snag a podium. The whole plan here was to try and get Sando up for the win and then have uh, Hucker get a time bonus, hopefully on the podium there, and then that would move him up overall into third on GC. So that was the ideal plan. Now, taking it up with 20k to go uh, with only teams of six is fairly ambitious so we weren't actually planning on uh, uh, riding the front from so far out and expecting to do a lead out for Scott at the moment what we're trying to do here is just um, just put ourselves out of trouble because without having without uh, seeing the circuit sorry you don't know exactly what's coming up so when we look at the stage beforehand we can see that it, uh, there's four corners obviously in this this final circuit as you can see on the top right we know that it's a little bit narrow but you don't get a really good idea of what the course is like so what we were hoping to do would be to get on the front get in front of all the carnage and if it gets really narrow then you're out of trouble and then we we're hoping to basically try and keep Scott and uh, myself who was hopefully going to lead him out and Robbie keep us up the front out of trouble and then the other guys in front just go as long as they possibly can and then hopefully let another train like UHC take over uh, in the final few kilometres and then we run off the back of another team's lead out train. So that was sort of what we expected going in. So anyway, that's that's sort of where we are. Um, 
Yeah, in Budapest, final circuit, final circuit, uh, and this is an intermediate sprint here. So this is one of the last intermediate sprints. You heard me yelling out there to Harper. So you can see he's actually shot off there and tried to beat uh, the Norwegian who was in the green jersey to sort of defend the points because Scott Sunderland has uh, a few points. He hadn't been going for any intermediates, but he'd just been picking up sprint points by finishing up there in the uh, in the stage finish. So you can see we've got a bit. Uh, Got a bit separated there, and that sort of ruined the uh, the rhythm just a little bit. I think Sean's just getting back on the front now, though. So there's the Norwegian in the green jersey there, and I've just called it uh, 10k to go. Oop. Two laps to go. So uh, yeah, look. I was probably getting, uh, that was probably a bit of false information there. Up, 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 up. So you could hear Hucker first yell uh, up and then I sort of passed it on. And as you can see, there was a bit of a swarm coming, a bit of a challenge to the lead out on the left. So we just yelled up to sort of transfer the message up to the front so they can sort of surge in front and sort of keep us ahead of that swarm. Uh, which is, by the way, why we've got Scott Sunderland, the main sprinter, sitting in front of me. So if we've got Scott on the back behind Robbie, because behind me is uh, Robbie, and then potentially we could put Scott there. But rather than put Scott there, you can see Robbie's going to be potentially getting uh, guys coming up from either side, and Robbie could be sort of pinched off the wheel. So we've chosen to put Scott a little bit higher up, just to make sure that he has a really easy ride going into the finish and he isn't sort of worried about those other teams coming up and challenging for position. If that happens, then there'll be myself and uh, also Robbie who can sort of, you know, hopefully give the early warning sign to the others and, and then we shoot off in front, apply a bit of pressure and move in front of that challenge. Um, but uh, Scott shouldn't be sort of too bothered by it. So that's why we've got Scott there. And the beauty of this circuit is that, as you can see, it is very tight and there's a lot of corners. So it makes it very difficult for other teams to get organised and then uh, try and make a move because you're constantly having to slow down for a corner. And then as you go around the corner, you can sort of, if you're in, a, if you're in that real sort of thick part of the peloton, you can lose each other very easily. Uh, so you're, and also you've got the elastic band effect. So with the elastic band effect, at the moment we're going through the corner fairly quickly, but as you go down the peloton through the corner, they tend to go through it slower and slower, which means when they get to the other side of the corner, they have to accelerate really hard. So you're actually getting a much easier ride on a really tight circuit like this. And you just see uh, one of our riders there swapping, uh, swapping off. So you can hear Robbie and I calling ease. That's because we're looking over our shoulders at this point and we're seeing that it's completely strung out. And then if it is completely strung out, there's actually no threat coming from behind. There's no real need to absolutely jam it and have guys like Sean and Chris um, potentially sort of use their energy for no sort of, uh, for no sort of gain. Because really, if we've got control of the front, that's all we want to do at this point. It's, it's a long way to go, 9K to go. So as long as we've got control, um, we don't want to sort of go harder than we need to. So it's important to sort of have the guys at the back of the train looking around, being aware of the situation and calling up and down. That's what we're using uh, for our pacing uh, to try and get as much lead out as you can. So if we can sort of ease up on the straights when there's no challenge coming, and then just up it a bit as challenges come, we'll make sure we get the maximum distance out of our lead out. So that's the that's the sort of the that's the sort of background theory behind all of this ease and up. So three laps to go, so it should be about 9k. Another thing you can see here is the team hugging the right hand side. That's one thing that uh, you probably heard other people, a lot of sprinters talk about that. It's, it's, it's very difficult if you're in the middle getting swarmed from both sides. It's a terrible situation to be in. So often sprint teams will, uh, will pick one side of the road and try and defend that because then the challenge of other riders when they swarm around, it'll always just be from the one side. 
So we were on the right there and you can see we've only moved out left because we're setting ourselves up for this corner. And that sort of movement on the front will make it very difficult for uh, teams who are potentially getting organised and, and making a bit of a move up on us. Um, they're going to have to sort of pass our entire train. So they may, be, like you see one guy just moved up on the side of me there. Um, but if he sort of just gets, uh, if he doesn't get all the way up to our other train, through the corner he's likely to sort of have his teammates lose his wheel and then he's sort of, he's leading out no one. Still at this point we've got Sean Lake on the front so he's been doing that bulk of the work uh, since about 20k to go and he in fact was also chasing brakes earlier so Sean he's, uh, he's a time trialist, he's Oceana time trial champion and it makes him perfect for this type of role so he's just been doing the bulk of the work. Harper has been giving him turns as well um, but Sean's definitely got uh, the most time on the front out of the six of us by a fair way. Certainly a lot more time than uh, myself or Scott Sunderland or, or Robbie who's also been sort of keeping relatively fresh. Uh, you probably noticed by now but uh, down the bottom left I've got a bit of a, uh, an overlay of speed at the top. Uh, then the, the bottom left bubble is power and then cadence on the right. Uh, that's coming off the Pioneer head unit and uh, from the Pioneer power meters that we've got uh, equipped to our bikes, both left and right side. So uh, that'll give you a really good insight into sort of the, uh, the effort required. You can see in this type of a course it is very off and on. At this point in the race We've uh, had the chance to see the finish a few times, so I remember at this point I was I was trying to keep a, a really keen eye on the surroundings and try and get a bit of a feel for the, the timing of this uh, lead out that will happen in a few laps time. I was also starting to think at this point uh, whether it would be possible just to go all the way until the finish. As I was saying earlier, we hadn't actually planned to just ride the front from 20k and then do a lead out that'd be a fairly ambitious and uh yeah probably a little bit uh a little bit generally an unrealistic type of expectation um but we've done fairly well here because of this uh the nature of the course and just being able to just use the huge time trialing strength of uh guys like sean lake and uh and chris harper so here we've only got two laps to go so yeah, I was, uh, I was quite wrong when I said two laps to go, two laps to go. Uh, glad the boys didn't take that one too seriously. If you're uh, interested in any of the other equipment we're using, uh, you can see Sean, uh, sorry, you can't see Sean, Scott Sunderland in front of me is running the Shimano Deep Dish C75s. Uh, it's a pretty flat day, so he's just opted for the pure top-end speed. Um, the bike that we're all running here, except for a couple of the climbers, is the S5. So most of us have gone the aerodynamic frame there because it's still quite a light bike, and uh, a lot of the racing that we do, there's a lot of flat out there, so having the aerodynamic advantage is uh, something that most of us have, have gone with except for some of the real weight weenies who have gone the uh, the R5 climbing bike. I know Tim Rowe and, uh, and Harper have both got the R5. So you can see there Scott Sunderland's just, uh, he's just dropped off the wheel and uh, ushered me up. So as you get closer there's, a, there's obviously a point where Scott needs to get on my wheel if I'm going to lead him out and uh, Scott's made the call there. It's time getting near the business end of the race and it's time for uh, the train to start taking its uh, intended form for the final final sprint. So you can see now we've got Sean who's just on in front of me now so Sean's getting really knackered he, he doesn't have much left in the tank that's why I sort of said ease before because Harper who's now in front of me he just did a bit of it he's fresh and he's keen he's got some really good form in this race and as he hit the front, he just jammed it. 
and we were, we wound it up to 50k an hour and I could see that Sean was just hanging in there so that's why I sort of at that point um, tried to yell out to Harper to sort of back it off a little bit just so we could get Sean to rest get a little bit of recovery in and hopefully just get one more turn because at this point I was really starting to starting to think oh dear this is we're in a really awkward spot if, we, if you're running out of men really early well not really early but if you're clearly going to run short you, you know that you've got to go with your sprinter you've got to drop back onto another uh, another team's lead out train and do that but with 4k to go I was thinking geez Sean is still here Sean's still got another turn to give uh, and we've still got Harper and Tim and it is a windy course so man maybe we could maybe we could lead this out I don't know and I, at this point I was very much in two minds about it bit of a stressful situation so we're down the uh, coming down the final straight so we're just about to get uh, one lap to go so about three kilometers so it's, it's getting to the absolute uh, business end and here we have the team Ljubljana uh, absolutely smoke past us and that uh, they've jumped us there and, and that's Sean he's uh, Sean's peeled off and said no nah, that's me done boys that's uh, that's all she's got so looking back this this uh, this move by the three Ljubljana guys is actually probably it's probably saved us to be honest because we were getting really stretched thin um, so if I wasn't thinking maybe we could work it out, now I'm really in a pickle. Now I'm really thinking, oh geez, maybe we could. 3k to go. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. And Harper, he's he's just caught straight around that guy. No hesitation. The guy is he's uh, he's a young guy from South Australia. He's got into the sport a little bit later than some uh, some of the others. He, he sort of didn't compete. As you know, an under 15, under 17, under 19. Uh, I remember when he first started racing, actually. Um, I met him up at the, the Tour Down Under when we were going for a bit of a ride with uh, Cameron Bailey, who was on my team at the time. And then I met Chris Harper, and he'd only just started the sport. And a few years later, look at him, absolutely monstering it. So apparently those Ljubljana riders weren't going, uh, weren't going hard enough for Harper. And he's just gone straight round. So 3K to go, and I've got... Uh, Tim Rowe in front of me and then Harper's taken the lead so yeah ideally I wouldn't want to be getting dropped off too much before say uh, 600 meters to go so these two guys have got to do 2.4k between them uh, which is a fairly big ask I know at this point I was I was thinking this could go well or this could go this could go really badly um, if we do run short and we get jumped right at the end it could be sort of too late to uh, too late to make events but you can see Harper has got something left in the tank he's wound it up to over 50k an hour here and he's absolutely motoring he's at 55 54 now and you can see on the wheel I'm doing sort of well over 400 watts like sitting on I don't know what the average is but I'm actually going pretty friggin hard on the wheel so absolute mega turn there by Harper really good turn Tim's just gone before the corner, and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and you can see, uh, you can hear by my voice there. Easy after this corner. I'm trying to get Tim. I want him to go as long as absolutely possible, because there's still a fair way to go, and he's the only one in front of me. Like Dicey could go either way here. So I'm looking around my shoulder here, and I'm seeing that no, look. Harper and Tim have already put guys well back. They've gone that fast out of the corners. We can sort of allow Tim to just get a bit of uh, a bit of recovery and hopefully get as far down this uh, straight as possible. You see now the speed is uh, is well up. Timmy is absolutely uh, giving it some. He's, he's in the saddle, but uh, make no mistake, he's he's putting in a fair effort. Go 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 go! Alright, so I've laid off the wheel there and I've opened up. Don't know exactly the point that I've gone, but this is the point that I thought if I go from there, I reckon we've uh, we've got a pretty good shot here. So started off, still out of the saddle as you can see, it's a bit, uh, a bit hard to see things. Up to 61, now I'm in the saddle, I've flicked the shoulder, flicked the elbow, sorry, and there's Sunder, comes past with about 200 to go. 
and uh, you, could, you know straight away as he came past, I could see it was fairly strung out on his wheel. The boys had done a fantastic job. The lead out's gone really well and there's no way Scott is going to be passed with 200 metres to go there. So at this point we know Scott's got the win and uh, we are pretty pumped.